court after this case. And I've told them the reason I'm having this case is like the first case that I won last year or two years ago. Is to get them to testify because when you testify, you locked into your evidence. You locked into your, you know, to your, uh, when you testify, your testimony. Like I could, I don't really need it because the, the, the child I won last week, last year, uh, two years ago, they came and testified, and they testified more, more than what I needed, and it's all right there on the paper. You know, I got the discovery, I got all that stuff, so I could win any case. I, I could file it now, and, and uh, but. This case I want to go to. This case I'm my own attorney. This case is to tell the Oakland story. And if I get time, I'm going to tell the whole story. You know, I'm going to start off with the modern times, but if they give me a little air and don't give me an I'm going to jump right back to 50 years ago and come right up to now. And the defense is absurdity defense. This is absurd. This is why we're talking to court. Because I talked like this before in the court. But I was just taking these in this last time. Because I wanted to get where we are now. The, what you say about me is absurd. The district attorney and their crew is absurd. What the police reports say is absurd. It's insanity. It's inconsistent. Because it all is. Another thing I'm going to tell the jury, I'm here to recruit, recruit you. I ain't here to convince you of nothing. I'm here to recruit you into this new world activity. Is this Oakland you see, the Oakland you remember? And they go, no, man, Oakland used to be nice. Now it looks like a third world. Some part of it looks, well, anyway. One big, some streets is so long, homelessness, homelessness, homelessness. Like they keep D.C. clean. D.C. looks nice compared to trash everywhere. Not everywhere, in our neighborhoods. You know, I, um, I just happened to be on, on the internet and supposedly, because I don't go downtown that much, but supposedly like on K Street, mm -hmm. Yeah, I took a picture of it. There's under the bridge downtown, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's rolls of tents yeah. where, you know, describing exactly what you're talking about. And if you don't go down there, you wouldn't know it, it exists. You know it's only. Unbelievable. Homeless. But, uh, dresses and everything. Huh? Dresses. They dresses lined up. It's unbelievable. I go down there too, I see the stuff. But for California, it just it doesn't. Right. That's that. 20, and California is 85. Right. Because remember the weather. Right. Simply, right. Uh -huh. if you can get out to where it's good weather, like uh, this weather the last few days is ridiculous for DC. Right. 70 degrees yesterday or something. 71. Good God Almighty! In January, mm. on the East Coast, good God Almighty! And they ain't talking about ain't no global warming. Hey man, it's global heating anyway. But okay, we might like that for electric bill and stuff like that, you know, heating. But what about the environment? That weather pattern change? Visioneering mean that we visualize solving those problems. We visualize making a new world that has more balance in it. Okay, we have to sell that vision to other people. So when we go back to California, you remember we used to go down every now and then uh, and give a couple of speeches outside? Those were training to see, what, you know, it's just training. All this period, remember, technically this last few years, have been a technically a rest period. It's work and rest. But we have been sweating like, oh man, we gotta go down and 
do this over and over and over. But we'll have three days a week where we go out and if we want the world to change, we have to get out and bring the people to it. They, they're not going to come to us. All the functional people know what we're talking about, but they don't hear from us. I don't know what they do on this machine here, but it's not getting out to the people. And you see the people, remember the people you was talking about? Chris Hedges, the girl from Berkeley, what's her name? Um, Michelle Alexander. Michelle Alexander. No, that's Michelle Alexander. She wrote. Abby Martin. Abby Martin. Abby Martin. Abby Martin. Michelle is the 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 the, the woman right. that wrote. Uh, uh, Slade, the new Jim Crow. Yeah. She wrote the new Jim Crow. Mm -hmm. But. And they connected with everybody. They connected. They connected with everybody. With everybody. And well, they, some of the Muslims. Some of the Muslims uh -huh. Some of the Muslims that, that that we know, they're connected with. They they appear on everybody's shows, or they, you know. And pe like I said, some of the Muslims that you know, mm -hmm. you know, are connected with these people. But technically, that answers the question. Then why not us? It must be we have to be doing either everything right or everything wrong for us not to be invited or uh, the experts on Ooga Booga land or nothing. Everybody they got talking, uh, what, answer, do they know us? Of course they did. We had our biggest demonstrations with them. You hear them talk, you know, uh, I never told y'all about uh, the little thing that was supposed to be going on would answer. We met here a couple of times. Answer went over to Iraq and they come back. Now, the ex attorney general was the head of it, Ramsey Clark. They come back talking about a good subject depleted uranium. This is in the late 80s and early, early 90s. It was an early 91, 90, 93, 94. They was talking about depleted uranium after the, the war. Yes, it was true. But they never, when they connected with us, it's during the period where they thought that we would be under total control. Abdul Malik members in power over the out there on the west coast, all of our six or seven centers out there under their control. They got people all up under me, all around me, so they think this is a shoe in. That's when they hooked us up with all remember answer, all the said and other. They said we'll hook him up now because we'll have control of it. That's what they thought. When they found out they didn't have control, they pulled back. Can you imagine? And one of the things, uh, one of the white girls as a lawyer used to talk to me a lot. She used to be up with uh, Darl Hedrick, she was, and they would listen to her more than, uh, you know, they, they would listen. Of course, I figured who they were a long time ago. But I say, here's how we can. She said, it would be a good idea if you and I, in combination, go around. Because she could see she's white, a lawyer, respected by all the Muslims. I'm a Negro, I got all the information and can speak with authority. So, I don't know what it was, but you remember the little lady olive oil on the uh, olive oil? What's her name? Uh, Papa. This lady looked like olive oil. You can probably remember who I'm talking about now. 
she, she looked like olive oil and she was the same size. Straight. I mean, straight as his pen. So, there was no, you know, whatever they was thinking, the guy she was going with was supposed to, I called that one time, I called from my masjid in Sacramento. Okay, how about I said, I said so he gave her, he was there, he gave her the phone. From then on, he was looking at me like, what are you doing calling here? And I'm trying to let him know this is the number on the card that she gave me to call her about this stuff. And not only her and him, but all of the answer crew was like, uh, what's going on? I said, man, y'all got to be crazy. I said, we don't do that in Islam. You know, in other words, it was always something kicking up that didn't have no relationship to anything. Van Hooten was the name, Myra Van Hooten, something like that. I don't know if y'all are. Yeah, the, talk, the skinny lady, she was skinny. I ain't talking about it, nobody, but she was thin as a rail. So everybody knows that we're aware of the environmental circumstances. And with this last thing that happened in Iran, I don't know why. Can you imagine? They called everybody but the brother. I have no idea why they do. Well, I do have an idea. But anyway, uh, that's insanity. I'm going to try to speed up. I'm still on page number one. Only halfway. Uh, okay, we'll combine use cases to develop our future. All of our future, our future is based on where we want to be, where we think the world should be not just where it is now but where we think the world should be that's what our planning is about uh, i was going to talk about destabilized humanity with uh, da, 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 da. they not only destay i'll just say it briefly they not only destabilize other countries, but they destabilize the people too. How? With rapid change. You know, things, this has been talked about in Alvin Toffler's book, like Future Shock, and all that over 50 years ago. But to change so quickly that whoever manages the change manages the stability of the society. For instance, they could put a gadget on that computer that could hold a hundred times much information. They could do it today. They got it. They don't put it on there. Why? The next one they come out with, they'll put ten times the volume to hold ten times. Then that, they'll say, that's old now. After you, you know what I mean? Planned obsolescence, right? Let them do it. That's how the United States got behind on almost everything. Remember the Cadillacs, oh, General Motors, they used to have 50,000 miles and five years. I, I know this is before y'all's time. But the Cadillacs I used to have, they had 50,000 miles on all the movables, the transmission, in five years. In 1970, when 1970 came out, they had 12,000 miles in one year. Why? Planned obsolescence. Did you plan to make your 
First of all, you make it cheaper and raggedy. And you notice the styles look, go from way back. Every two years, American cars change. So the 54 and the 55 Cadillac is exactly the same, except three, six bars down the back of it is exactly the same. The 55, the 56, well, that's kind of long. But the 57 and the 58, very close. 59, 60, the only change is that 59, that Batmobile tail that goes way up. It was so ridiculous, they smoothed it out a little bit in 1960. So every two years they changed. 62, 63, same car, little change. 64, 63, 64, same. 65, 66, exactly the same. 67, 68, in other words, they change it every two years, so you have to get a new car every two years. Then the planned obsolescence, when your car from 50,000 and old cars to 12,000 miles from five year guarantee or warranty to one year. And that's 1970 Cadillac, like you could walk up to it and punch a hole in it almost. But not the 69, not the old ones. You couldn't do that. All right, it was ready, made out of date. Now, just for history's concern, they had them big giant engines. Remember 472 and 500 cubic inches. Good God, 500 four barrel carburetors. I guess people don't remember what a four barrel carburetor is, but it's four jets. The Cadillac got. Nine miles in the city and then 11 miles on the highway, maximum. That's what it rang good, got a good tune up. High mileage, cheap gasoline, remember gasoline? 35 cents, 30 cents a gallon. 40 cents, 50 cents, 60 cents. Right? When everything changed, that's when the world caught up with white Toyotas. First Toyota I seen, one of my girlfriends had a little Toyota. And it seemed like a toy, a toy older, a toy older. It was about 68, 69. But it ran good, good on gas, right? Remember all the European cars? In, in Europe, gas was expensive. In America, gas is cheap. In Japan, that's one thing Japan don't have. There's no oil. So they import everything. All the Japanese cars, gas efficient. Uh, look at the American cars. Think back in the early 80s, 70s. Look, at the cars got bigger each year. <clears throat> if you look at that 79, 78 Lincoln, that boy goes all the way down the street. And the 85 Broham, the last one is a block long. With the back little side window. They gotta get rid of them. Why? Toyota, Nissan, everybody is buying them cars because they can't afford. So America bankrupted GM themselves. They did it to themselves. The foreign policy of the United States. They assassinated the brother. They put themselves out of business. Iraq says what? You got to get out of Iraq. Whether they go or not, when they go, they don't go eventually. It's no problem. Don't worry about it. What did they want? What did Iran want America? Out of the Middle East. What did all the Arab countries say? Same thing we said. The U.S., they've been listening to these tapes. If you get out of line over there, 
they going to hit Bahrain, they going to hit, and they looked at the map. Did you see them showing the maps on TV last week when they showed maps of the Middle East? There's a U.S. base here, there's a U.S. base there. They had the maps. That's true. All within Iranian, da, 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 da. And whatever they talk about this airliner, whatever happened, the U.S. with that Iron Dome system that they supposed to gave Israel, it wasn't working because they knew that those missiles was coming, right? And they didn't shoot none of them down. Somebody was telling them to fabricate. This court, everything, it don't make no difference what it is. Boss man got to go. The UN, they just met. It's, you can't tell Mr. Zarif he can't come over here. You've seen all that. Now they got how they assassinated and everything, and they got the lies they done told. Uh, it was four embassies they was going to hit. It was one. Uh, we didn't know when it was, but we knew it was coming. Now they know when it's coming, and everywhere we'll have what show us when they. It's ridiculous. What is wrong with them people? It's ridiculous. It's, it's nice. It's fun. To why, it don't make no difference what they, why they're doing what they do. It adds to the weakness of the United States of America. And the weaker they get, the less they're able to do. And this has produced some psychological stuff around the world. The world is asking, wait a minute, boss man, you did this, you did that, you had no, right? This will wind up being worse than the invasion of 2003. But anyway, so they have to destabilize the world with rapid change. Now, what do we have to do? We have to stabilize the world. What, uh, we believe this is a period of controlled not managed evolution instead of just going crazy evolution. Okay. You leave them alone to do what they want to do. If you think this surveillance mentality, digital mentality, uh, 